Welcome to tomorrow's world. This present age is running out of time. It will not continue for much longer. There is a secret war for the control of this planet. And the soul of every human being on Earth is being targeted as a victim. God has been battling mankind's spiritual enemy for thousands of years, and this enemy intends to drag everyone to hell with him. Jesus Christ came to rescue us from hell by sacrificing his life in your place. In addition to this, he must finish the job completely by returning to destroy this evil, otherwise no human would survive. We are approaching this final battle. What will be the sign of Jesus' coming, and the end of the age? This video is about the very near future, and what we can expect to happen on the world scene. Prophecy gives the most clear and conclusive proof that God is the author of prophecy. Fulfilled prophecy is proof of God. It also proves that God spoke through the writing of his prophets is recorded in the Bible for our benefit today. Fulfilled prophecy should motivate us to look at the prophecies of the future and realize that they will come to pass as well, and there is hope not despair, for those who anticipate Christ's return. There is only one kind of shock worse than the totally unexpected, the expected for which one has refused to prepare. We have been warned what is to come, but 99% of the world's population don't have a clue what's about to happen, unless they have studied biblical prophecy and how to be prepared. And although much information could be included in this video, the following is a very brief overview of what will shortly happen in the near future. Throughout the history of the world, Dictators have come and gone, but there is a world leader coming, who will demand allegiance from every human being on the planet, or die. And he causes all, both small and great rich or poor to take a mark on their right hand or their forehead, which is the number of his name. If you do not take the mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy anything, such as food or medical care. You will either starve to death if you are not executed first. The worst final seven years of history is upon us. It's called the Great Tribulation. But you can escape, providing you take notice now. If you could predict the future, what would it look like? The future of this world seemed very grim, as imagined by the writer George Orwell in his novel 1984. He was very graphic in the depiction of what he anticipated. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever but george orwell did not know the final chapter of earth's history as written down by the biblical prophets who've been getting it right for six thousand years and a person would do well to study these will history repeat itself There will certainly be cataclysmic upheaval, but after this, the Earth can look forward to a bright future. It all depends on the decision you make now, whether you escape this coming catastrophe. Where do most people look for answers? And how is it all going to end? Future events have already been told, from the beginning to the end of the world. God will intervene and save this world, and its glorious redemption, which you can be a part of. But first you need to know about a global leader, soon to appear on the world stage, who the world will worship as a god. He will be the final dictator, and will negotiate a seven-year peace deal with many nations after major conflicts in either Europe, 
the Middle East or both. He will be hailed as a hero, but will not be what the world believes him to be. The Bible already has a name for this man. The Beast. The Man of Sin. Or the Antichrist. He's waiting in the wings, for the right opportunity to put in an appearance. The global system of the Antichrist is well underway. Who is the power behind the throne, and who are pulling the strings? Antichrist will rise to power with the help of these hidden ones, who use a system that already controls the world. This system goes by various names, such as globalism, or the global agenda. Those who really pull the strings are well hidden. The plan is for one man to control everything, and bring about a financial system, with this man's name and his number imprinted into every human, in order to buy and sell. Over them all is the Great Eye of Lucifer, which is the Eye of Freemasonry, controlling this system. In order to achieve any position in the day's world, you must be a Freemason. They communicate with a special handshake called a grip. The visible face of the society is a charitable fraternity of free and accepted men, while the secret side is that of rituals, Luciferian beliefs and witchcraft. Most lower degree Masons would be horrified if they knew the truth about this, and indeed, the truth is kept well hidden until they reach the higher ranks. It is a smokescreen for what is truly going on. What is the hidden agenda behind the facade? These men are being manipulated by forces beyond their control. The unseen realm controls everything. The Bible is clear there is a battle on this planet against an unseen foe that is out to destroy the human race. We are not fighting human enemies, but evil powers of the unseen world, and against evil spirits, in the cosmos or heavenly places. People dismiss the idea of a spiritual world out there. That's like a fish denying water. Scientists have now discovered the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension is the realm of spirit beings and aliens. This proves that a spiritual world exists, and in the last days, this spirit world will break through into our dimension. Manifestations of the supernatural will become visible to us. The Bible is clear, that a group of fallen beings or angels came to this earth to corrupt and destroy mankind. In the modern world we know them as aliens, spirits, ghosts, poltergeists and ascended beings. And the angels who did not keep their own designated place of power, but abandoned their proper dwelling place, he has kept in eternal chains under the thick gloom of utter darkness for the judgment of the great day. And I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast and the false prophet, and they will use mortal instruments to achieve this. In other words, people will become possessed by these demonic beings, who dwell in this fourth dimension. He will converge all religions into one, yet he will oppose every so-called god or object of worship and will put himself above them all. He will even go in and sit down in God's temple and claim to be God. Secret brotherhoods and the global agenda, work closely with these fallen angels and have secret meetings to shape the world, in order to bring Antichrist to power. This world leader or president who is to come, 
will be in all likelihood be elevated to a high-ranking position as a Freemason, a master of the craft. The Prophet Daniel anticipates his arrival. In the latter time of their kingdom when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences, will stand up and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace he shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand. At some point Antichrist will be made into a god or deified. This process is called apotheosis, and is the honor that Freemasons give to someone of very high ranking. Have you never thought it strange, that in a so-called Christian society, these people are elevated to heaven surrounded by pagan gods, and not biblical characters? They were all Freemasons, and Freemasonry honors the old pagan gods. The facade that it is a Christian organization is simply not true. It's a deception. The Roman gods and the fallen angels are one and the same thing, and they intend to return to elevate Antichrist into a god. Who was Thomas Jefferson referring to when he said, I have sworn upon the altar of God? Well, we know that Luciferian doctrine teaches that Lucifer himself is God and Jesus is the devil. Is that who he's referring to when he said God? We have come to the conclusion that the freedom of religion was a cloak that would allow all the secret societies to come and operate freely here and even to set up policy. A lot of the policy that we've seen over the years was set with the mindset of protecting the secret societies, allowing them to get where they need to be so that they can operate and they can call down the gods of old. The man Antichrist will become possessed by the spirit of Apollo who is the dragon or Lucifer, but is also the chief pagan god. They have as king over them, the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek he has the name Apollyon. Don't be deceived, for that day will not come unless the abandonment of the Christian faith comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of destruction, the one who is destined to be destroyed. This Antichrist will be the dragon, Satan, or Lucifer. Here is the hidden truth you are not supposed to know. To you Sovereign Grand Inspectors General, we say this, that you may repeat it, to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st and 30th degrees. The Masonic religion should be by all of us initiates of the high degrees, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. Yes, Lucifer is God, and the true and pure religion is the belief in Lucifer. Antichrist declares himself God in the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. The Book of Enoch speaks about a group of angels who rebelled and fell to earth to corrupt mankind. Will Antichrist utilize the alien demon agenda for his purposes? Ancient gods and aliens are fallen angels and their offspring are the Nephilim demons. So the ancient gods, the fallen angels, demons and extraterrestrials are all the same thing. What are their motivations? Their motivations are to bring forth the Antichrist to become the world ruler. The mainstream media are trying to push the agenda that these are extraterrestrials but they cannot be. It's mathematically and scientifically impossible for beings to travel light distances to our planet using known physics. Unless they are spiritual beings manifesting as physical, they are instead interdimensional from the spirit realm, but the mainstream media will never admit it. The logical explanation is that these are not ETs from outer space, but are interdimensional evil beings. The leader of this group of uh, rebels from this parable universe said, look, we're making a deal with you. We're going to set up a global government. You guys can run it. We'll back you. But leave us alone. We've got a war to handle. It's coming here. We're the good guys and the guys that are coming through are the bad guys. That's how they described it. Um, if you run a parallel to the 
Bible stories about the end times, you see that the leader of these quote unquote aliens is Satan, and they were and his, uh, his alien uh, like angel beings were kicked out of the heavens, you know, the parallel universe, into our world to stay here and get ready for a battle, the last battle at the day of Armageddon. And if those days are not cut short, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be cut short. This is where you need to consider how to be ready. Antichrist with his physical and spiritual armies will gather against Jerusalem. But the Lord Jesus Christ will appear in heaven to intervene and destroy Antichrist. And so the earth shall be saved. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus Christ was not just a man. In fact, he was far from it. Jesus Christ is 100% man and 100% God at the same time. Everyone who takes the mark of Antichrist is doomed. But Jesus loves you and and died to redeem you, so that you can be saved from the hell that's coming on the earth. But he cannot force you if you refuse his offer. There is a wonderful hope awaiting those who do accept. He has promised to snatch his people off the earth and save them before this calamity happens. Will you choose his salvation now? Ask him in your own words to be your savior and lord, and he will not let you down. There are many more questions answered in the book, The God Ultimatum. The God Ultimatum answers the usual arguments against a supreme being, the accuracy of ancient written scrolls and human immortality. Motivational and challenging, this book will get you to a place where you've never been before, but soon or later, all of us must face, the God Ultimatum.